previous week, you know, in the previous week, uh, we tried to discuss the purpose of prodigal uh, brazen altar. Why do we need this brazen altar? Why do we need to raise this brazen altar? Why do we actually need uh, to be going into what we call covenant relationship with God every day of our life? So in, in life, you have to discover what you need. Because what you need determines what you do next. Praise God. So what you need determines Hallelujah. actually you need this covenant, you need this brazen altar. For instance, if you're in this world and you actually need eternal life, or you actually need to enter into the kingdom of God, that means you need this brazen altar. You know, when Jesus was talking in the book of Matthew, from where we pick our lesson last week in Matthew 19, from 24 down to 26, you know, he was just giving a telling a story and he told the people, of, uh, the, the disciples that, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eyes of a needle than for a rich man to go into the kingdom of God. Then mm. the disciples were, were like, mm. uh, if a rich man could not go into the kingdom of God, who can? Because there is this uh, normal phenomenon among the among human beings that if you are rich, if you are well to be, that you have every your life is comfortable for you to worship God, that you don't need anything, you, you, that it's not a so, that you are not worrying, you know, that is nothing disturbing your mind that will stop you from serving God. So they were like, if a rich man that has no worry, that 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 is not a busy every day toiling just to eat a, a, a square meal, you know, cannot serve you, cannot go into the kingdom of God, who then can go into the kingdom of God? Then Jesus now looked at them and told them something. And that is where I want us to bring out our lesson. He said to them, to man, it is impossible. To God, but to God, everything is possible. So the only possibility mm. for you to go into the kingdom of God is Jesus. Mm. Is God. Because in mm. him, the impossibility becomes possible. And that is why you need this covenant. Because without you going to him, this covenant is simply is simply going to him every day of your life to eat from him. To mm. eating from him simply means eating his flesh, and eating his flesh simply means you know abiding, walking according to the way he did while he was here on earth. It means it simply means mm. living like him while he is here on earth. You know when G, when the disciple asks uh, Jesus, teach us how to pray. He said, if you want to pray, say, our Lord's prayer, our Father who is in heaven, I love you thy name, thy kingdom come. So that is where the lesson comes from. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So the kingdom of God starts from here on earth. And how can you bring down the kingdom of God here on earth? That is through the Holy Ghost. Spirit. That is mm -hmm. through this establishing this covenant we talked about. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, in, in the Bible, it says the kingdom of God is peace, righteous uh, peace, joy, righteous peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. So now, if you want to have that peace, joy, you must become righteous because there is no peace for the mm. wicked. So peace is only for the righteous person. And that peace can only come in the Holy Ghost. That means that righteousness can only come in the Holy Ghost. And Paul says, the righteousness I have is not the one that comes to, you know, through struggle, through things I do, but it is the one that comes through faith in Christ Jesus. That means the righteousness Paul is preaching yeah. about, the righteousness we are talking about is the one that the Holy Ghost gives. If you read the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 45, when Jesus was, when God was talking about Cyrus, he said, I will make the crook road straight before him. I will lead him in a righteous path. He said, I will command heaven mm. and it will rain down righteousness. That means righteousness actually comes from God. It can't come from you as a human being. You can't contribute anything mm. on your own as a righteous man. And your righteousness can only come from God. And the Bible said, Abraham believed God and was counted unto him as righteousness. So this is where we are going to pick our lesson. How did Abraham believe God and how did it come to, um, how was it counted on to him as righteousness? How can I just say, oh Lord, I believe you and I will become righteous because that is where the confusion lies in our Christendom. 
How do we believe God and how do we get righteousness through believing in God? You know, the Bible said in the book of um, uh, Psalm, Psalm uh, 127, if the Lord did not build a house, in vain did the builder build. If the Lord did not keep the city, mm. in vain did the uh, 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 watchman watch. That means, that means, if you want any foundation to stand, if you want any lifestyle you want to start, which is, if you want this righteous life we are talking about to stand, you need God. And Abraham, as a man, employed God for him to become righteous. Because remember, Abraham came from a land of idolatry. Now, how did he employ God? And what did he actually believe? Believing simply means having faith. That was why, if you want to talk about a man of faith, you talk about Abraham. Because Abraham is a man of faith. He's a good example of faith. And what did the Bible say about faith? In the book of Romans 10, the Bible said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you use Amplify to read it, it will say, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the ministration that comes from the lips of the Messiah himself. So, now you cannot have faith if you don't hear from God. And what is then hearing from God? And how can hearing from God produce faith in you? You can actually tell me you hear from God if you don't do what God say, asks you to do. And covenant time simply means going to God for him to tell you what to do. It means going to him for him to direct you every day of your life. That is the Holy Ghost we are talking about. That is the brazen altar we are talking about. It means allowing him to direct you. So it means walking by faith. Bible say without faith, it is impossible to please God. Means without you going to God, you cannot please God. So if I am to please God, I have to go to him because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The big question we can ask ourselves, how can we hear God if we don't go to him? The only way you can hear God is for you to go to him. Abraham was able to hear God because he always approached God. Bible calls him his friend because he interacts with him. I can't actually see you on the road and call you my friend if I don't have any relationship with you. A friend is somebody that I share affairs with, somebody that I share my secret with. That is why the secret things of the Lord belong to those that fear him. And those that fear him is his friend. And how, they, how did they be, uh, uh, come to become his friend? They gave him time for him to reveal his secret to them. And when God tells you his secret, it means what he wants you to do. And you do it, that is faith. And that is how you come into a righteousness. And that is how you come into pleasing God. And that is how you come into bringing down the kingdom of God here on earth. And that, you know, he said, mm. our Lord's prayer, let thy, will be done. Let, let thy kingdom come. As it is in heaven, and let uh, uh, our Lord, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will after thy kingdom. The next thing that follows in our Lord's way is that thy will be done. So the kingdom cannot actually come if the will of God is not done. So for me to penetrate into the will of into the kingdom of God. I need to do the will of God. And before I can do the will of God, I need to go to God for him to tell me what his will is. So the only way to know the will of God is by going to God to inquire of him concerning his will. So covenant time simply means going to God to inquire from him. Mm. That is a covenant we are talking about. Moses had a covenant with God. If you read the book of Exodus, you find Exodus 33, you find out that Moses, when he was uh, told to lead the people of Israel, he wept and cried before God and said, I can't lead these people if you don't show me who I'm working with. I need to know you. I need to see you. I need to experience you. So he is inquiring of the will of God concerning his life and the life of the people of Israel. He is trying to tell God, I can't leave these people if you don't tell me your will concerning these people. And what did God say to him? The Bible now told us that God asked him to come to the mountain. And that was where God revealed to him the Ten Commandments, which is the will of God concerning the people of Israel. 
So you can't actually know the will of God if you don't go to him. And you can't get the kingdom of God if you don't know the will of God. And before you can get the will of God, you need to go to him. And bringing the will of God into your life is simply faith. Because when you know the will of God and walk according to the will of God, that means you are not a man of faith. Man of faith means that he's no longer doing his own thing. He's not doing the thing of the unseen being. Because faith, you have faith on that which you did not see. And nobody, you, you can't see God. So it is believing that unseen being, going to the unseen being to inquire of his will and him directing you because he actually lives inside you. Believing that he lives inside you and going to him for him to reveal his will inside you. And when he asks you to do things, you do it according to his will. Now, I'm going to give you an example. As a young man, um, because why I was uh, considering this teaching, I was uh, kind of praying that what, what, what kind of example do I actually cite in order for, in order for us to understand what I mean. Now, you now remind me of an incident that happened some time ago. You know, as a young man, as a growing youth, you know, what is obtainable in the life of the youth these days, especially a youth of my age, you know, um, uh, uh, at the time, you begin to feel um, the need for an opposite sex in the sense that you need an opposite sex friend, especially when you, you see your friends or your mates around having their, uh, uh, their, 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 uh, their, their girlfriend or thereabouts around, sometimes you'll be tempted into, into you know, seeking your own into into abiding the idea of man. Nah, at least, um, uh, it's not it's not bad to have a dear friend, you know, something like that. So, as, as a young man, sometime, uh, one time ago, I began to consider it. I was like, I think I need a dear friend. Do you know what I did? Because I've been groomed into inquiring from God in anything He wants to do. I was sincere enough. I went to God. I said, God. I need a dear friend. Give me a dear friend. In fact, as the story as the story goes, there was a girl uh, uh, I, I had in mind. Then I was like, God, I would like this girl to be a girlfriend, to be my girlfriend. And she's not a Christian; she's a Muslim. I say, God, if possible, I can I can I try to combat her for you. You know, I can I can bring her to your knowledge if you can uh, uh, hook me up with her. So I was like considering it at the same time, praying it out, to know the will of God concerning that. Remember, we are talking about how to bring down the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is walking in a righteous rule, doing the will of God, that is the righteousness, because the righteousness cannot actually come without faith. And righteousness simply means uh, uh, walking by faith, and walking by faith simply means obeying the word of God. So I now went to God to know his word concerning my thoughts. Remember, Without God, you can't live a, life, a righteous life here on earth. So when I went to God to ask him concerning this thing, I began to pray. God gave me a revelation. And if I eventually embark on this journey, my mind is telling me to embark on. I will land myself into a mess that I will come to regret later. Immediately I have that revelation. I don't need anybody to see. I prayed and I got my peace. Those emotions, because what actually most times lead men into sin is emotions and feelings. So those emotions and feelings as a young man disappeared. So it was now God directing me. And that is how I came to stand in the right path. What do I want to bring out? I'm not trying to say that as a human being, I don't feel emotions. I'm not trying to say that as a human being, I don't have feelings. But I am trying to say that my feeling is subjected under the authority of God when I involve God before carrying out any action. Sometimes you might feel to go to Enugu, God will ask you not to go to that place you want to go to stay back. But your feeling, your emotion is pushing you to go to this place. Why? Maybe because your loved one is having one party or is celebrating one thing or the other. And the emotion will tell you, oh, your loved one is celebrating her marital life. If you don't go there, uh, 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 she will see you as, uh, as somebody that, that is an enemy of God. But God might actually don't go. Now, if you stay back based on the word of God, you have acted on faith. And you staying back based on the word of God might prevent something evil that might happen to you. So this is now faith. Faith simply means going to God to inquire from him. And common term we are talking about is 
going to God every day to know his mind. You know, our world is living in a deep sin comfortably because we don't actually go to God. Because now, like I'm saying, me going to God prevents me from committing those things that I ought to have done as a youth. But because I have somebody that I'm, coming, I'm interacting with, whenever emotions or feelings or human, you know, human, human, that, that, that makes me a human being want to arise and push me into doing that, which is against the world, because I have a covenant with him, he will prevent me. Let me tell you, devil is not afraid of the knowledge you have. David is not afraid of the Bible, you know. He's not afraid of your money. He's not afraid of your academic uh, qualification. He's not afraid of even your, even your spiritual know-how. No, he's not afraid. No matter how spiritual you are, you think you are, devil can prove you that. Do you know what devil is afraid of in your life? The only thing devil is afraid of is a God in you, a Christ in you. That is the only thing he's afraid of. When they wanted to pull down Daniel, they couldn't see anything to pull down Daniel. You know, they tried so many things. They told themselves, there is no way we can indict this boy. The only way to get him trapped is through his God. So they are afraid of that covenant he has with his God. And they know that if only we can separate him from that covenant he had with God, we can get him. And that is that covenant that we are talking about. Because Daniel is somebody that always goes into the convent, into, into, his, into his house, facing Jerusalem to inter interact with God. What is he doing? Talking with God, trying to know the mind of God concerning every day of his life, trying to do his mind, the mind of God in every day, trying to inquire from God in any situation. So then you know, the only way to trap this boy is to separate him from that covenant. And they now conspired against him and said, uh, King. Nobody is going to talk to any God or to any human being. Nobody is going to beg any human being or any God or anything except you, the king. What did they want to do to prevent Daniel from communion with God? Because that they knew that Daniel had a daily communion with his master in heaven. So they want to stop that, that, day's, that day's communion so that they can use those days that Daniel did not commune with God and trap him into sinning against his God, into going that which is contrary to the plan of his God. Daniel, having known this, known this, ignored them. Why? Why did he ignore them? He knew that the source of his strength, the source of his being righteous, because they have looked for a way in bribery. You can't see Daniel in lying. You can't see. There is no way you can indict this guy because there is a spirit guiding him into doing things he is doing. Even though when emotions and, and flesh try to put him into doing what is contrary to the mind of God, because the spirit is living in him, the spirit can never allow him. So now, having known this, what do they want to do? They will now want to, you know, separate him from that spirit. And that is why they said, let's conspire against him through his God. Let's have, let's, let's, let, let's just throw out a plan that will separate him from his God. When you're having known this, ignore them and move ahead. So the only way Daniel was a righteous man, even in the land of unrighteousness, is because he has a covenant with God. He always goes to God to know the mind of God. And because he always goes to God to know the mind of God, God revealed his mind to him and gave him the strength to do his mind. And that is the covenant we are talking about. That is the, 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 the breaking altar we are talking about. Because when you go to God to know his mind and go to him for him to give you the grace to do his mind, you are into the Holy Ghost too, and he's building the praising altar. Remember, he's a consuming fire. So he's building his fire in you. And how is he doing it? He's building the fire of righteousness, the light of righteousness, that you will shine like a light before the world. And when men look at you, they will say, of a truth, this person's character is different. He's behaving like that man called Jesus. And that is the kingdom of God coming here on earth. Yeah. Because you can't actually behave like Jesus if you don't have the spirit of Jesus in you. The spirit in you yeah. knows you. He searches this deep thing. So if the spirit of Jesus dwells in you, what the spirit will do, he will take what is in Jesus and put it in you. That was why Jesus said, he will not glorify himself. Rather, he will glorify me in you because the spirit will take what is mine and bring it into you. And that is simply having that communion with God, interacting with him in everything you do. If actually, remember, I started this teaching with 
knowing what you want. If actually you want the kingdom of God, if actually you want the eternal life, all you need to do is to inquire from God, establish a time in which you go and interact with God, try to inquire from, from him, try to, you know, reason with him. He can speak to you through any means. If he can speak to all, if he can speak to Barak, Abi Baram through a donkey, he can speak to you through any means. He can talk to you through any means. He can talk to you through any signs. So, all you need to do is to go to him to understand the way he talks to you. And when he talks to you, because your mind is to achieve life and bring down the kingdom of God, both here on earth and achieve it in heaven. So when you go to him and he talks to you, because that is your mind, move ahead and do that which he told you to do. Remember, because the mind of the people in the wedding at, the, at, the, at, 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 at Kenna, at, at Kenna was, was to have a wine because their wine has finished. They don't have any other option. So all they need is just a wine. So when they were going, Mary told them something. Anything he asks you to do, do it. And because their mind is just to have a wine, whatever he asked them to do, they did it. If that thing he asked them to do, we actually bring the wine. So if actually what you want is a life, eternal life, if actually what you want is the kingdom of God, that means bringing that, that means having this communion is very, very important because that is the only way to bring down the kingdom of God and make you a righteous person. And that is the covenant that we are talking. That is the brazen altar. That is the purpose of the brazen altar. Bringing down the kingdom of God here on earth. Making you a righteous man. If actually you want to be a changed person, if actually you want to stop the sinful attitude you are doing, if actually you want to have a new life, if actually the life of Christ is, is your desire. You know, a songwriter said, heart like yours is my desire. If actually that heart like that of Jesus is, is your desire, you need this covenant. If Daniel needed it, you need it. If Jesus could say, I live because of my father, whoever that will live will live because of me. That means Jesus did not actually achieve anything without the father. So if you want to achieve something on here on earth, you need Jesus. And how did Jesus live because of the father? Jesus had a covenant with the father, just like Daniel did with God. Bible said in the book of Luke 22, verse, uh, if you start from that 39 downwards, he said, and he went to Mount only just as he usually do. Meaning, he always go there to commune and inquire from God. And remember, when Bible recorded that he went there, it was when he was weak and the flesh was pushing him, it was a kind of pushing him to go against the will of God. And then he said, Father, if it is thy will, let this cup pass away from me. But let thy will be what? Done. Because the mind of Jesus was that was for the will of the Father to be done. He went there to inquire for, for the will of the Father and to ask the Father to give him the grace to do the will. And the next verse recorded that God sent the angel and he was strengthened in the spirit. So the only way to get that strength and on, uh, to do the will of God. The only way to know the will of God and get the strength to do it is by going to him. And I think this is this is where we are going to stop for today, why our mommy continues to expose more Amen. to us. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I want to um, elaborate something from what you just said about when God is asking human or when God is requesting from us, that we, he wants us to be like him. That is the purpose of Holy Ghost Spirit. He wants us to be like him. And when you are talking about what, that we need to involve God in everything we do, we need to involve him in everything we do. We need to inquire. We need to ask questions. We need to ask him, God, are you in this? Father, should I do this? Should I not do this? Should I go? Should I not go? So when you now mention about the, the urge or the feelings or what you think, you have to do because uh, your age mates, your peers are into it. Uh, so that it's not going to make you uh, be a fool before your, your age mate or before your friends in the area of, I need to have a, a girlfriend so that I can belong. So many people do things because so that people will see, people will say for some reasons. People doesn't have their own, or have their own decision of doing something because of what God will do or what God says. They just want to do it because of fear of parents, fear of peers, fear of group, or fear of uh, even uh, fear of self. So, but I want to go somewhere 
concerning the purpose of the Holy Ghost School. And that place, I'm going to get it from the book of um, uh, Garantian, book of Garantian, uh, chapter 5. I will start from verse, verse 16. Before I go to this book of Garantian, so I want to say something about what is happening to you before you started desiring. That is what we call desire of flesh, desire of man. So, and when you see yourself that such a desire begin to come on you, know that the enemy is at hand. That is why one time when we finish this topic of how to hear from God, we go to the teaching of exposing this Babylon. Because this spirit of Jezebel is the one that is loyal people to do all kinds of atrocities and against the word of God and against the mind of God and against the purpose of God for their life. You see that people don't do things they want to do. St. Paul cried for that. He said, things I want to do, I don't do it. But those ones... I wanted to do, those ones I don't want, I see myself doing that. I see myself. They begin to think about his flesh, about the self. What is forcing me to do this? Something is wrong. I see some forces slowing me into doing this because I don't want to do that, but I see myself doing it. I don't know what is wrong with me. God, I need your help. Come and deliver me. So it was the same Paul that was speaking to Galatians in this book of, I believe you have the answer why he wrote that book of Galatians chapter five. So I start from verse 16, it says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the same Paul that he shouted that I'm a mortal man, who can help me from this desire? Who can help me from this urge? Who can help me from this mess up? Because it's not what I want to do that I see myself doing. So he eventually brought the answer. He now knew that indeed why he see himself loins, uh, being lured into those things because he's walking in the, in, the, in the self. He's walking in the flesh. So by the time he got the answer, he now began to address the Garantian guys. And I believe that this thing is speaking here. He must have addressed the youths or the younger age because the elderly people most times they don't have that youthful lust. And so the elderly people don't have that youthful lust. It's, it's something that happened between the youthful age. So he began to tell them, I say then, Walk in the spirit, and you shall fulfill, and you shall not fulfill the lust of all flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and those are contrary to one another, so that you do not do things that you you wish, that you do not do things you do not wish. So you see that Holy Ghost school is simply the answer. As you just said, you have the desire, have the urge, but you consult us somebody that's ahead of you because you're into this covenant. And what is the covenant? God, I wouldn't want to offend you. I want to do what you wish. I'm into covenant with you that even though the whole world fell, I am single-handed myself, that I'm not going to fail like others. I will be a, a separate person to you. I will be a good person to you. At least when you look upon the earth, you can see that someone is finding faithful for you. So this is all about the covenant. And the covenant, how do you renew the covenant? It's just to be coming to him at least one hour every day. It is a time of renewing the relationship. It's a time of making him know to know you more, you to know him more. It's a time of introduction, time of everybody expressing his heart. It's a time of showing love to each partner. It's a time of marriage. That is why the Bible calls it Revelation 19. It says it's a marriage. We are the bride, that he's the bridegroom. He is the husband. We are the wife. So now, how do a man or a woman show his husband, his partner affairs? It's only when they are together. And when they are together, it's only when they begin to come in among themselves, then things will begin to unfold. Secret things will be exposed and revealed. Things that they don't want to talk, they begin to say it. So this is all about the communion. This is all about the covenant. This is all about coming together and interact. And from there, more things will be coming out. And you begin to learn. It's a learning center. Holy Ghost School is a learning center. Because the more you go to God's presence, the more you learn. And what you learn, you have more knowledge. You add on top of the one you have. You can able to know and have something to give to people around you and people that God is bringing close to you. So when you begin to think about how you inquire of God, and God gave you elevation son, if you want to do what your peers are doing, or what your friends or people around you is doing, look at where it will end. And when you saw the elevation where it's going to end, you shrink, you stop. Because somebody supernatural, somebody greater than you, somebody you respect and you fear, you have reported to him to take his skills for him to go and do what you want to do, what your flesh is leading you into. You consulted him. And he gave you the answer right away. And said, son, if you do it, look at where it will land you. And you understood it and you shrank your stop. So this is what St. Paul is talking about here. 
And this is all about the purpose of Fodigo School. That when you involve yourself in inquiring, asking questions, people don't know that you ask God questions. That is another area we're going to go to one side again. How do you have a God but you don't interact with him? How do you have a God you don't talk to? I cannot worship a God that I cannot talk to, he cannot talk to me. Two of us cannot know each other. That is a blindness. And now I see why Jesus is telling the, the Pharisees, you guys are blind. The Pharisees, the, the high priest, you guys are blind and you are leaving blind people because you don't see, you don't interact. He doesn't talk to me. If you talk to me, if you hear from me, you will know that what you guys are doing is wrong. So Paul is making it very clear here that indeed, we must not fulfill the loss of our flesh. And the only way we must not fulfill it is the only way we walk in the spirit. And what is the spirit? Holy Spirit. Then if you go back, if you continue in the next verse, you know saying, verse 18. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Then 19. Now the works of the flesh are evidence. What is the evidence? The life we live, that is what's proved that we are not in the spirit. Then he now says, which are adoratory fornication, one of what you just said, uncleanliness, lewdness, adoratory, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outlaws of bust, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, ravishousness, and the, and, and the lives of which I tell you beforehand, just as I've also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Then finally in 22, you see, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, loving kindness, long suffering, kindness, goodness, and fruitfulness, gentleness, self-control, against, against such, there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with each passion and the desire. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So you now find that the only way to overcome this self-desire is nothing but to walk in the spirit. Now, how can you walk in the spirit? It's only the Holy Ghost school. Why? Because this Holy Ghost school simply means a way that God is cleansing us, perfecting us to be like Christ. Holy Ghost school is simply discipleship. It means discipling nation, discipling your family, discipling your business group, discipling your organization, discipling your marriage, discipling your children, discipling your neighbors, discipling everyone around you, your church member. That is all about Holy Ghost School. And how can you disciple someone if you're not being discipled by God? So the only way to make it and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh is only Holy Ghost School. Now I'm spitting this because of the example you gave. Now you find that people are very far from desiring the mind of God. As St. Paul, I quoted earlier, he desire the mind of God, that he don't want to offend him, that what he don't want to do, he does it. Now he got the answer by, admi by admonishing the youth, do not fulfill the desire of flesh. If you want not to fulfill the desire of all flesh, you have to walk in the spirit. And the only way to walk in the spirit is to have the Holy Ghost school, is to have a covenant with God, is to stand on your two feet and make the deep intimacy with this Christ Jesus Christ. And at that point, the Holy Spirit will be your friend. And he will not be one that will be keeping you far from all the lust of the flesh. He will be the one that will be controlling you. He will be the one that will overpower the powers and forces that is leading you into that. Because no one can make anyone righteous. It's only God who make you righteous. And that God will make you righteous, will make you righteous through the Holy Spirit. And for you to be righteous through the Holy Spirit, you must know who is this Holy Spirit. You must make him a friend. You must know how to interact with him. And that is where this topic comes from, how to hear from God. If you begin to hear from God, you will stop messing up your life. Because before you can even to go out there to mess up your life, you have already talked to you. <coughs> Sorry. Holy Ghost School, purpose of Holy Ghost School is to hear from God, to cleanse us, to purge us, to perfect us, to make us to be like God, to stop the uh, fulfilling the desire of flesh. That is the purpose of Holy Ghost School. And that is why you see that that is what all people of God need. 
You can see that that is all what the church needs. You can see that is only what the world need. Because the world we add in today, they want to avoid anything called Christ, anything Jesus, anything Holy Spirit, anything righteousness, anything God say, anything God's commandment, God's status. They don't want it. Anything God ordinances, the earth we add today, they don't want it. Human being wanted to do what they want. But I keep asking a strange question, very powerful question. How can you live in the world you did not create it? And the creator of the world have given you what he wanted to do to succeed in the land or the earth he created. And you say, no, you're not going to work with him and you're not going to fulfill his mind, but you will live your, according to your own way. How can you work? There must be a crash. That was what God told you of Israel. I'm giving you the land of Canaan to possess it, but you must not worship any other God because I am the owner of the land. I'm taking you to the land. I'm giving it to you by my power. But you are not the biological owner. You are not the original owner. But I will take it from the owner and give to you. And on this, we have a covenant that you will serve only me in the land. If you refuse to serve only me in the land, I will deal with you. I will scatter you all over the whole world. So it's agreement. And they agreed. And Moses committed them to God. And they eventually left the, the wilderness and entered Canaan land. And even in the same land, they started to worship another God. And God said, no, it's not going to work. And he scattered them. So it's the same thing that's happening in the earth today. Religious leaders, political leaders, and the community leaders have made up their mind that they don't want anything this God. They don't want commandment in this school. They don't want school to bring in 10 commandments anymore. They let the world and the political leaders and religious leaders and the world leaders look into the earth, how it was the time there is a commandment of God in the school. There is a moral instruction in the school. Let them judge those days and this day. They compare and contract which one is better. Since they decided to remove God from school system, where children are being raised in the fear of God. How was the earth? How is it going? So let them take a decision that they must bring the owner, the creator, who knows the system, who has the secret of the earth and the humanity, who gives you the life you live and the right to breathe your breath. So he knows the secret of how to sustain this world. But if we said we don't want him, the earth would begin to, as it already crack, and it is continue cracking, it continue cracking until it eventually collapse, and that should be the end. And that the bad pine, you can now see those people that say that they can patch it. How can you patch what it does not create? Who created it to know the foundation, how to touch places, and it will collapse? And you as a world religion, and the political religion or political power, you stay to patch, you want to fix what it does not create it, and you don't know how the crack, how it started. It's not possible. If we continue wasting time that we don't want the word of God and the word of God, it will continue until in our eyes it will collapse. So I urge every human being, I urge every man, I urge every youth and all children, God is still on his work. He has never changed. He has never died. And he will never and ever because he is almighty. He's the supreme God. He's the creator of the universe. He is calling every humanity, mankind back to him. For this total purging and cleansing, that thing you think you can't do, that righteousness you think you cannot live, you can. It's easy by the help of living under the roof of the Holy Spirit. Christian Paul called. He said, if you know you don't want to fulfill the desire of all your flesh, embark and make Holy Spirit your best friend. And he will take over the battle. And he will lead you out of those crossroads, those boundaries, and those traps that jungles you think you cannot overcome. Overcome them. And you will see your life suitable for God. You will see joy in the Holy Spirit. So the purpose of Holy Ghost School is simply to build your relationship with God to cleanse you, to purge you, to remove you from all the sins, to make you a vessel of honor, according to the book of Timothy. He said there are so many vessels. There are vessels of gold, there are vessels of clay, there are vessels of iron, and there are vessels of uh, so many vessels. But he said that if you want to be the real one, you must go through purging. You must go through cleansing so that God can bring on a vessel of honor, the one that God will honor not the word that the world will honor. Today, people want human honor. People want the word honor. People want neighbor's honor. People want school honor. People want uh, degree honors and the rest of them. PhD honors, master's honors, all those things in here. 
what I'm saying today, I'm talking about God honor, where he will honor you. And for him to honor you, you must come to his understanding that him who gave Holy Spirit to the church and Holy Spirit who was available for us to be used, we must embark and hold him strong. And follow what St. Paul says, that for us not to fulfill the, the lust of the flesh, you must make Holy Spirit your friend. And this Holy Spirit being your friend is all about this Holy Ghost school. That is why it's called the spirit of the school of the spirit. The school of the spirit means where you begin to learn, study who is this Holy Spirit. How does he talk? How does he interact with his people? That's it. That is all about the school and nothing else. And that is the purpose of Holy Ghost School. Why God brought up Holy Ghost School? He wants to talk to his people. He wants people to know the way he talks. He, he wants people to understand his radio. When he's speaking, fugitive, people will understand. When he's speaking, proverb, people will understand. When he speaks, revelation, you understand. When he gives you a dream, you understand. When he's speaking, not the book us, you will know. When he takes it to the scripture and speaks, you will know. When he ministers to you in songs, because he talks to people in songs, you will know that your father is speaking and you will give him audience. And you begin to understand it. This is all about the purpose of Holy Ghost School. This is all what God is doing in Holy Ghost School. Because why today there is so much deception is nothing because we lack hearing from him. We don't know what he said. He talks, he speaks, God speaks. Even now, he's still speaking. But how many give him attention? How many want to know what he's saying? How many people will wake up and say, I thought God is talking to me. I believe he's speaking. Let me go more deeper and ask him, what is he saying? What is he trying? Which message is he trying to pass through? Ignorant are finished. And that is why Satan brought all his groups in thousands and millions, scattered them all over the whole world. And the idea of prophesying for you, giving you full sacrifice to idols. According to Revelation chapter two, the church in Titila. The woman called herself prophetess, who law, the prophet of God, cursing them, giving them food, sacrifice to idols. And when they eat this food, and they will bring it and begin to share to the congregation, and the congregation will be eating. God wants all those polluted food to end. He wants that abomination to end. And that is why he brought forth Holy Ghost School. And Holy Ghost School is in your house. In your house. God speaks to every human being. If you give chance, he will talk to you. You don't need anybody to be an intermediate. Nobody should seek or hear from you. You have ear, you have heart. God speak through your ear, he speaks to your heart. So if he doesn't hear his voice, you can hear him in your heart. So this is all the purpose of the Holy Ghost School. Honestly, I think we'll have to go through this purpose of Holy Ghost School once more, because um, if people understand the purpose and the values, the benefits of the Holy Ghost School, or maybe we'll go into benefit of the Holy Ghost School next time, then people can catch it. If people can catch this, it means the church is revived, families is revived, business is revived, because you, if you hear from God in your business, you'll be see it may be that you want to, because you, you haven't sell for the day, and the market of $50, you wanted to cut it to send the $20 and you will hear him say, don't do that. I will send the customer that will buy the same market $80 for you. Because he hears from God. For you to cut off the market to, to lose even from your cost price, you will wait. Even at the dying minutes, you will be thanking God, but I haven't seen the customer. He will still say, I will send the customer for you and you're going to sell it $80. And before you know it, even to lock up your gate, somebody will come out. Oh, I want to buy this. In your eyes, you will see it. Something would have loot fifty dollar. He now added another fifty dollar on top of it. This is what I mean by hearing from God. He speak. He want to be involved in affairs of man. He want to know about our marriages. Two days marriage is broken. He will be telling you, wait, this your husband matter. I will treat it. Just give me a few months coming. But you'll be impatient. You won't listen. Before you know it, you involve friends and families and relatives. They will scatter their everything, and that is the end of it. But God was telling you, whisper it to your ear. Even most of all, have a dream, a revelation. Don't do it. You won't listen until you crash it. God speak to his people. Some people, you tell them, don't travel this time. Leave it next time. They will not listen. Many people are wasting because they don't want to hear. So God is calling us to this Holy Ghost school. He wants to interact with his people. He's looking for intimacy. He makes the spirit of God available for us. But today we don't use it. Holy Spirit is just hovering over the whole world. You looking for people that will bring him in. 
bringing in into their business, into their marriage, into their ministry, into their church, into their individual life. You want to be in control. You want to help, but everybody's avoiding him. And that is what is cause of the whole problem, even in political setting. Many political leaders, they don't want God. Fine. Let me see how you survive without him. So in every setting, he want to come in. That is all about this Holy Ghost school. That is all about this Holy Ghost school. So I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you. You will hear, you will listen, you will understand, and you go with him. And this is what will happen today concerning the purpose of the Holy Ghost school. So I pray that God will help you and give you grace to understand and to focus. And what does it take you is nothing, just one hour or more than every day. Come to him, call him, a, call it a school. For you to have more knowledge of something, you must en en enroll yourself into a program. And when you enroll yourself into a program, there must be courses you have to read, go through quizzes, go through tests, go through exam, you can able to credit it and prove that you've passed it. And finally exam. So it's the same way God is bringing us closer to test us, give us quizzes, give us tests, give us exam, and at the end he will prove us that we are his people. That is all about Holy Ghost School. When you enroll yourself into this school, the Spirit of God begins to reveal himself to you. And you yourself begin to reveal yourself to him. Two of you will start a journey, a relationship, and things will begin to unfold. You begin to pick out things he doesn't like about you. And you too will begin to change. God loves human beings. He loves every one of us. He wants us. He wants to be in charge because he called us, he created us to be in charge. So I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you to understand and enroll yourself into the school. In your house, where is this school? It's in your house. Not your small place in this school. Just pick a time, make it a school, make it a mandate. And you will see how God will turn things around for you. Prayer and the calling and the deliverance will be calling for years. You will see him, he will come. Because what makes difference is the presence of God will be involved. And when the presence of God appears, things that cannot be done can be done. Because it's the supernatural power that can break you, can break bondages, and break chain in the life of men. We are suffering today because we lost his, hope, his, his presence. And his presence is ready to come back. So work on him in your house. It will happen. And you will begin to testify. That is all about Holy Ghost School. Holy Spirit, we thank you for today. Lord, the little we can do, we are doing, we ask you to do the rest by convincing your people and drawing them close to yourself and show them your mighty power that they may know that you alone is God. Let your spirit take over. As many that are there listening and those that will listen later, give them understanding. Thank you, my father, because I've answered this prayer. In Jesus' most powerful, wonderful name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Thank you, amen. Jesus. Lord, Maso Katarabuka. Thank you, Father. Mm. We give you praise.